Every song she picks out. Amen. Amen. All right, when everybody will take your Bibles here this morning, turn to the book of Acts. Acts chapter number 16. Acts chapter number 16, and we're going to start reading at verse number 9. Acts chapter number 16, and verse number 9. Devin, can I get you to do me a favor? Acts chapter number 16, and we're going to start reading at verse number 9. When you find any place, we'll stand to your feet to show honor and respect to the Word of God here this morning. Acts chapter number 16. And we're going to start reading at verse number 9. I'm going to read several verses here. I'm going to try to read it uh, fairly quickly uh, so we don't have everybody standing for a long period of time. Thank you, Devin. Acts chapter number 16, and we're going to start reading at verse number 9. The Bible says, And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed to him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately... We endeavored to go into Macedonia. Notice there verse 10 when it, where it says, And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we come, uh, came with a straight course to... Uh, sem yeah, okay. I love some of these Bible names. I love some of these towns. I, I'm, I'm glad I live in Kings Mountain. I can pronounce that. Yeah, what John says, Samothasia. That sounds good to me. Whatever, you know. Um, all right, therefore, Lucy from Troas, we came with a straight course to some city like Bessemer City, and the next day to Nepalus, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony, and we were in that city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the woman which restored thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house, and abide there, and she constrained us. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, "I command thee in thy, uh, excuse me, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her." And he came out, uh, came out the same hour. And when her masters saw that the hope of her gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, "These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city." and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and Amen. sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been, fle uh, had been fled. Verse 28, But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, and sprang in, and came trembling, and fell down before si uh, Paul and Silas. I want you to notice something there, verse number 29. Then he called for a light. He's fixing to get that light, by the way. Hey, yeah. Verse 30, And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, Amen. and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his, straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them, and rejoiced, believing in God with all of his house. Amen. I want you to look back at verses 9 and 10. Is where we're going to get our <coughs> message, is where our, our starting point of our message here this morning. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately 
we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. I want to bring a message entitled this morning, What Happens When You Pursue the Vision God Has Placed Before You? What happens when you pursue the vision God has placed before you? Let's pray. Our dear and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank You for this day. Thank You for the good fellowship. Thank You, Lord, for the good singing. Thank you, Lord, for how we already feel your spirit moving amongst us here this morning. So glad, Lord God, we can feel the Holy Ghost when he moves amongst us. God, I pray that your spirit continue to move here this morning. Touch hearts and lives. Open up eyes and, and open up minds and hearts. God, I pray that you just have your will and your way here today. God, I just pray, Lord, if there's somebody here that's lost, may they get saved. If there's someone that's backslid, God, I pray, Lord, that draw close to you. If there's someone that's having doubts about the ministry, about the call on their life, God, I pray that you just uh, give them assurance here this morning. God, I pray that you help me as I preach. Give me power and wisdom. Use me in a mighty way. Lord God, I just want to be your servant. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 Everybody can be seated. What happens when you pursue the vision God has placed before you? Now, there's several, several events here in Acts chapter number 16 from verse 9 to verse 34. There's several things here. And it's very tempting sometimes as a preacher to go through in each one of these individual stories in this passage. And I can, and, I, and I, every preacher in here and every preacher I know can take these individual stories here and preach messages off of these individual stories. But this morning, I want to look at the bigger picture here. I want to look at the broader picture here, how all these stories line up and how God was in every single one of these things, in every single one of these circumstances that came Paul and Silas's way. God has a plan for us, amen? Yeah. Yeah. And everything that we go through and everything that we face God knows what He's doing. Man. Don't you dare doubt Him one minute. When you're going through a hard time, God knows what He's doing. Amen. When you're on the mountaintop, God knows what He's doing. Right. When you're down in the valley, God knows what He's Amen. doing. Amen. See, we see what's before us Amen. right at the moment. Mom. But God sees the big picture. Amen. Amen. We're not God. We don't know what the future holds, but God does. Amen. And God sometimes allows us to go through some things and face some things. God allows victories to come our way to help us get to the main victory. Amen? Amen. God allows hardships and struggles to come our way to strengthen us, to get us prepared to get to that main victory, that big victory in the end. God aligns everything in our lives to happen for a reason. Everybody with me here this Amen. morning? Amen. We see here what happens when you pursue the vision God has placed before you. Now let me say this here in Acts chapter number 16. I believe that Paul has a vision. He sees what God has laid out for him. Now let me say this. Do I believe that people get these kind of visions today that they can just God shows them and they see it with their eyes and actually see this? No. And I'll tell you why. I'll say this and I'll tell you why. Because God has given us His complete book. Amen? Man. There's no more There's no more prophecies and no more revelations that have to be laid out. Right. God gave us 66 books and, it's, and it finishes up with Amen at the end. Amen? Amen. Okay? Now, but let me say this. Does God still give us visions? Yes, and let me explain the difference. Okay? These people that say, oh, I, I see. Yes, yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I, I, I see you, Brother Scott. I, I see you walking down walking down North Kent Street in Bessemer City. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I, I, I see you hitchhiking on the side of the road. Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. And, and I, I see somebody pull over in a blue sports car. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And, and I see, I see them give you a thousand dollar check. Amen. Made out, made out to the preacher. Yes, Lord, I see this. Yes, Lord. No, I don't believe in that junk. These TV preachers do this, God, no. and they get these people to call in, yeah. and they throw their money That's at these right. TV preachers. And guess what? When they end up in a hospital, do you think Robert Tilton comes and prays for them at the hospital? Do you think Joel Olsen comes Come and prays for them at the hospital? No. They only do that mess to get 
gets your money That's and right. it confuses all kinds of people. Amen. But I believe that God does give us a vision. Yeah. And let me tell you this. I believe God's given me a vision. And I'll tell you what it is. I haven't seen nothing. I haven't had no great revelations come my way. But God's given me a vision. Hey, there's a city right here called King's Mountain. Amen. And there's people that are dying and going to hell. Amen. There's people in this city that's hungry. And they're doing without. Right. And they need Christians to step up to the plate and supply the need. Amen. To fill a gap in their life. Right. To fill a void in their life. And that void is Jesus Christ. Amen. And there's Christians showing that they Amen. care and they love them. Amen. That's a vision. God's placed that on us. God's given us a vision. We ought to do everything we can to pursue after that vision. That's right. No, I haven't seen these pictures in my head. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. But I can see things through reading God's Word. God gives me peace when I get on my knees and I pray and I ask Him for guidance. That's, right. Amen. Amen. that's vision and that's direction. Man. This junk you see on TV, that's exactly what it is. It's a big pile of you know what, amen. 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 It's dumping a bunch of junk and they're trying to take your money. The way a person gets a vision and gets direction from God is to spend time, put your nose in that book, yeah. spend time reading Man. His Word, get down on your knees and pray and seek God's face and seek His guidance. Right. God will give you a vision. He'll give you direction and He'll do everything possible to get you going in that right direction Amen. and get you to that end result. Amen. 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 We see here, Acts chapter number 16, verse 9, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. Let me say this. Everybody in here, you could say the same thing that Paul says here. Paul had a vision that was somebody in Macedonia that needed to be saved. How many people in here do you know somebody that's lost on their way to hell? Then bless God, get a vision Come on. to do everything that you can to see that person get saved. Come on. Amen? Amen. Amen. Number one here this morning, Paul had a vision of a man needing help. Paul had a vision of a man needing help. Let me say this this morning. Let me ask this question here this morning. Number one, Paul had a vision of a man needing help. Are you close enough to the Lord to get a vision? That's good. Are you close enough to the Lord to get a vision, to get guidance and direction from the Lord. You know, I, there's, I, I've known Christians, I've known Christians, they've been Christians for 30, 40 years, and they've never gotten any kind of guidance or direction, but you know why? Because they're not close to God. They don't do anything in their Christian lives. They are Christians for 30, 40 years and still babes in Christ Come on. because they don't spend time with God. Amen. Everybody with me here this morning? Amen. Amen. Are you close enough to the Lord to get a vision? How many of y'all have known people, known Christians, they've been saved for years and years and years and have never done anything for the Lord? And sometimes they're some of the most faithful ones. They'll show up Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. But they do absolutely nothing for the Lord. You know why? Because that's all they do is show up Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. They sit there, they listen to the preaching, and they, they, that's what they do. They, they, they listen to it. They're hearers, but they're not doers of the Word. Yeah. See, there's a big difference of showing up in the house of God and sitting on the pew and hearing me holler and rant and holler and scream and stomp and spit every week in, week out, every single service and sit there and say amen and then walk out this door and not do anything that I've said coming straight from the Word of God. I believe that we're capable of getting a vision from the Lord. Are you close enough to the Lord to get a vision? That's the reason why a lot of people do not have any kind of direction whatsoever in their life. That's the reason why there's a lot of people they spend year after year after year, decades upon decades, sitting on a pew and do absolutely nothing for God. That's the reason why we got churches today that ain't growing and they're stagnant. Yeah. Because we got people that show up, they sit on a pew, and they don't do nothing with what God gives them. Good. That's right. Hello? Everybody with me this morning? Yep. Let me say this. God's given us some things here. God's allowing some things to come our direction. Just all this good news I've told y'all has happened this week with the food ministry and all the things have come. Now we've got people here. God's expecting the people here to get up off their blessing assurance and do something with it. Amen. Amen. God's going to keep God sending it our way for a reason. What, he, what He's looking for, He's sending it, and He's looking for people to step up and say, I'll do something with it. I'll do Come something on, with it to make a difference. I'll give it out. Hey, you know what? Some, some churches, somebody would offer them a 20,000 hamburger patties, they wouldn't take it. Amen. Yep, that's right. You know what? I'll be honest with you, it was kind of tempting me not to take it. We had no freezers. 
Where, where are we going to put 20,000 hamburgers? Does, does anybody here got the freezer space for 20,000 hamburgers? You do? About a thousand pounds now. Well, you have about a thousand pounds, yeah. Didn't know what I was going to do. You know what I did? So we're going to take it anyway. God, you giving it to us. We ain't going to say no. Amen. 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 God's sending this stuff our way for a reason. Why? Because God's given us opportunity. How many of y'all heard that old, that old Latin phrase, carpe diem? Seize the moment. Seize the moment. Hey, we may not have all these opportunities all the time. Right. God, may, You know what? I believe this is a test. I, it is a blessing from God, but I believe it's a test at the same time. God's sending something our way and saying, here it is. What are you going to do with it? Come here on. it is. Hey, if you do what's right with it, Come I'll on. bless you with something else. Right. I'll bless you with something right. more. I'll bless you church right. more. Hey, and there's no telling Come on, what God can do. But bless God, we got a vision here, but oh, we're going to do something with it. Yeah. Come on. Paul had a vision of, of a man needing help. Are you close enough to the Lord to get a vision? Do you even want a vision from the Lord? I believe there's some Christians, this is all they want. Come on. Amen. Amen. Come I, on. I ain't praying for a vision. Because, and I ain't praying for direction. Because that means I'll have to do something. Yeah. And I don't want to do anything. Watch out. I just want to show up, be seen, say amen at the last prayer, and leave. Come on. Come back Sunday night. Amen. Goodbye. Show up Wednesday night. Amen. Goodbye. I ain't reading my Bible. Come on. Because it might come convict on. me. Amen. I ain't reading my Bible because I might read somewhere where, where God commands me to do something. Come on. I, I'm, I'm showing up and I see the preacher running his mouth, but I ain't listening to what he's saying because it might convict me. It might cause me to want to do Amen. something. Amen. I'm not going to pray because if I pray, then I'm talking to God and He might respond. Amen. There's some Christians, they don't want a vision. Come on. They don't want God to speak. Come on, yeah. Because that means I have to do something. That's the reason why churches are dying. Come on, That's the reason why people That's are dying right. and going to hell. It's because Christians don't want a vision. I don't want to do nothing. Mm. Lazy. Yeah. That's right. Mm. Yep. Preach. Lazy. Preach. Come on. Lazy. That's right. Right. Lazy. Amen. Christians, that's what they are. Oh, man, that's right. That's what most churches are. That's oh. good. That's what most churches are filled that's with. Amen. Laziness. Slothfulness. Amen. Don't want a vision from God. That's right. Come on. Or they see that the church is getting a vision. Oh, no. I better change churches. I believe a lot of people change churches not because they feel God leading them to go over here. I just feel led by God that I should go over here. I think some Christians leave their churches and say I was led by God because they see their church has got a vision and the church is doing something and there's a, there's a four letter word that's being said a lot that they don't like. W-O-R-K Work? What is... The, I do my nine to five Monday through Friday. Bless God, that's all I'm doing. Preach. A lot of people, I believe, the church starts getting on fire for God, and there's a vision there, and there's people stepping up the plate to oh. fulfill that vision. That's right. That's right. And a lot of people say, you know, I, 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 I think I'm just going to look for somewhere. I just don't. I just don't feel at home there anymore. Come on. Come on. I just don't feel God's presence. I'm not getting spiritually fed there anymore, and so I think I'm just going to go over here. Come on. But what it is, is they're running from God. Yeah. God has placed a vision in that church, Amen. and God is putting a burden on them, and they're running from it because they don't want a W O R K. It's good. Those y'all can't spell, that spells work. Amen. Paul had a vision of a man needing help. Are you close enough to the Lord to get a vision? Do you even want a vision from the Lord? Are you willing to do what is necessary to obtain a vision from the Lord? How many of y'all want to do something for the Lord? How many of y'all want to make a difference in the lives of others for Amen. the cause of Christ? Amen. Come on, preacher. I want my, when I'm dead, when I breathe my last breath, and I'm dead and gone, I want people, when they remember me, the first thing they think about is Jesus Christ. And that I Amen. preached Jesus. And that people got saved and came to Jesus because my life was sold out and yielded to Him. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's what I want people to know. Amen. Amen. You know what? Growing up here in this town, as a kid, there's a lot of people that remember me for playing ball. And I still run into that from time to time. But I'm going to tell you, I'm liking what I'm hearing now when I run into people, when my name gets mentioned. Glory Bound Baptist Church. Amen. Church is growing. Church is moving. Nothing I'm doing is what the Lord's doing. Amen. 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 But see, what happened was there's a vision. And you latched hold of that vision mm -hmm. and you ran with it. Are you close enough to the Lord to get a vision? Do you even want a vision from the Lord? Are you willing to do what is necessary to obtain a vision from the Lord? Paul, look at verse number, verses 9 and 10 again. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed to him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. Verse 10. And after, the, after he had seen the vision, immediately yeah. we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering to the Lord, had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. He didn't wait till tomorrow. He didn't wait two Amen. years from now. He didn't wait five years from now. Amen. God said, this is what I want you to do. And immediately Paul got right to it. Hey, I'm telling you right now, I guarantee you sitting in this church, there are people here that God's given you a vision and He's given you guidance and direction in your life Mom. what you should do for Him. And you know what you're doing? I wait. I wait. I wait. I wait. You know what's going to happen? You're going to wait so long. People are going to die and go to hell. That vision is going to be removed from you. Yep. It's going to be placed on somebody else. God's going to use them. They'll reap the blessings. They'll reap the benefits. And God will be done with using you. Mm. Come, on. Come on, preacher. Paul had a vision of a man needing help. Number two, two women got help along the way. If you read this whole story here, Acts chapter 16, verses 9 through 34, he had a vision of a man needing help. Along the way, two women get help. Two women get help along the way. Lydia and her house get saved. They're going out to prayer. Lydia's there and she hears what they're praying. And it touched her heart and it convicted her heart the things that they were saying. And they wanted to know who is this Jesus? Who, who is this that you're talking about? What, what do I need to do to have eternal life? What, what do I have to do to get salvation? And it opened up because they followed their vision, immediately followed their vision. It opened up a door along the way. And they preached Jesus to Lydia, and Lydia got saved. They traveled on, and they come across this young lady, this young damsel, the Bible says, a young lady who was possessed. And, and, and this, these men in this town was using this young lady because she was possessed with a demon, and they were using her for soothsaying. In other words, they was, trying, they was making money off of her because she could tell people's future, supposedly. And she was following behind Paul and Silas, following in behind them for days on end, saying that these are the men that can tell us about salvation. These are the ones that can tell us. And finally Paul had enough. And he turned to her and he told the demon to get out and to cast the demon out of her. And you know what happened? Her life changed. An opportunity, a door was opened along the way to the final destination. Everybody with me here? Yeah. Yeah. See, God gives you, hey, if God gives you a vision to go start a church down the road, preachers, if God gives you a vision to go to Gap and start a church, God gives you a vision to go start a church in Shelby, you know what? You pursue after that vision, God will open up some doors along the way Man. for you to make a difference in the Man. lives of others God. as you're pursuing and getting to that point. Yeah. Man. Let me say this. For 10 years, I pastored a Spanish church. It was not, what, it was not God's call on my life. God opened the door. And I stepped through that door and I got training that I needed to get. Made a difference in the lives of a lot of people. A lot of people, a couple hundred people got saved along the way to get me to where God wanted me to be. And that was the start of this church right here. Man. God knows what He's doing. And if you follow Him, if you get a vision, you follow His direction, God will lead you and He'll guide you. And He'll open up opportunities right. along the way. Man, that's right. Paul had a vision of a man needing help. Number two, two women got help along the way. Number three, Paul paid a price. Now see that right there? That's where I'll lose some people. Paul paid a price. I don't want to pay nothing. See, we live in a day and time, we live in a society of people who just expect to get what they want all the time. Mm. Right, everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Now see, we're real quick to jump the gun and, say, and automatically jump straight to talking about Things within our government and our society, food stamps, things like that. We can go that route. But I'm going to go the spiritual route here. Mm. 
We got a lot of people feel like they can get down on their knee and pray one time. God should give me what I want. Come on. God, I want a brand new red sports car. Where's my sports car? We think of God as some type of cosmic bellhop. Come on. That's exactly what we think of God. We think God some kind of cosmic bellhop. That if we ask, it is right there. God, I want this. Poof. There it is. Uh, Robin Williams just died. I think about that movie Aladdin. How many of y'all ever seen that, that cartoon movie Aladdin? Yeah. Poof, what do you need? 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 We think, we think of Jesus as being a genie. Uh, he's not a genie in a bottle. We rub the lamp. He pops out and tells us, I'm going to give you three wishes. Here you go. Sometimes you've got to pay the price. Sometimes you've got to be willing to sacrifice a little bit. See, that's where a lot of Baptists say, I don't want no part of the vision. Because if I have to sacrifice anything, if I have to give up a Saturday, hello, 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 if I have to give up a Saturday, if I have to give up a day off, you know, I work hard for the week, if I have to give up a day off, you know, I just, I, I don't know if I'm going to pay that price. You know, I, I like to go do this, and I like to go do that. That's where we lose a lot of Baptists right there. Not willing to pay. Oh, you read through this story here, Acts chapter number 16, verses 9 through 34. Those kids are getting a vision over there. Come on. Acts chapter, Acts chapter 16, verses 9 through 34, we see where Paul gets a vision. And we see along the way where there's two young ladies that get help. But we see where Paul pays the price. Those people, those men that was kind of, I guess, had ownership over the girl that was possessed with the devil, it changed their whole way of living. See, the devil got cast out. She, her life got changed and they couldn't use her no more. So it made them upset. So what did they do? They arrested Paul and Silas and they threw them in jail. Now a lot of Christians, if they were experiencing something like that, this is exactly what they would start thinking. This must not have been a vision from God. This must not have been God's will. You know, because hardship come my way. I must have got outside God's will. I you know what well, God's not really in this. Sometimes, sometimes God's in the hard times. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes God allows that hard time to come your way. Yeah. Sometimes Good. God allows you to experience yeah. some things and go through some things. Yeah. And it is perfectly, it is His perfect will for your life sometimes Amen. to go through these things. Amen. Paul paid a price. They threw him in prison. He was, <coughs> Paul, they took Paul and Silas. They stripped their clothes off of them. They beat them with whips. And they threw them in the prison. Paul paid a price. When you pursue a vision, you'll face struggles and disappointments. Amen? Amen. Amen? When you're pursuing a vision, you'll face struggles and you'll face disappointments. If it was easy, everybody with me? Everybody listen. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. If it was easy, that's right. everybody would do it. When, when you're pursuing a vision, you will face struggles and disappointments. But with God... You can overcome those struggles and disappointments. All things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to His purpose. You love the Lord and you serve Him and you're doing it for Him, not for yourself, but you're doing it for Him. When those struggles come your way, those disappointments come your way, the Lord will give you the strength to step up over them. Amen. I, I think back to, to, to Joshua, the battle of Jericho. Did they do anything at the Battle of Jericho to take that city? Did they go in there? Did they have to use their swords? Did they, have to, did they go in there with, with bazookas? Did they go in there with AK-47s? No. What did they do? They marched around the city. Yeah. Blew the horns. That last time, that seventh day, they marched around the city, what, seven times? Mm -hmm. Then blew their horns, and guess what happened? Guess what happened? Everybody let me hear? Yep. The walls came tumbling down. Yeah. The Bible says they fell down flat. You know what that means? There was an obstacle in their way. But they trusted God. They didn't even have to climb over the rubble. They didn't have to even climb over the bricks and stuff out of the wall. God knocked them things down flat. They walked straight right through it. They didn't have to climb over nothing. Because God overcame for them. But they were willing to face the battle. They were willing to face the obstacle right. head on. Amen. They were willing to stand Amen. there and defy the obstacle Amen. and say, this is what God has said. This is what God has laid out. This is God's plan. This is God's purpose. And I don't care what the obstacle is. We will overcome. We are going to pursue what God has laid out. And they stood there and defied the obstacle. And God brought it down because it was God's Amen. vision in their life. It was God's perfect will for them. That's right. Number four. 
the mission and the vision was accomplished. See, it took Paul and Silas going to jail to fulfill the vision. <coughs> because see, the man in his vision was a jailer that needed help. Number four, the mission and the vision was accomplished. Though in prison, God's power was demonstrated. We were thrown into prison. Let me say this. When we face struggles and obstacles that come our way, we automatically, woe is me. Why, God? Come on. Why? I surrender. I surrender. Swing low, sweet chair. <laughs> Carry me home. <laughs> what did Paul and Silas do? The Bible says while in prison, they sang the praises of the Lord. They sang them so loud yeah. that the other prisoners could hear them praise the Lord. Now they just been beat. They're trying to fulfill a vision that God has given them. And now they've been beat. And for doing nothing wrong, they were doing good and trying to help people and make a difference in people's lives. But they were arrested and thrown into prison. Why are they singing? I see Paul and Silas sitting there in the prison, being beat, bleeding, clothes ripped to shreds, laying there in prison going, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. For this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. For this is the day, this is the day that the Lord Amen. hath made. Amen. They started shouting, praise the Lord. Wow, God's been shouting praises of the Lord. And all of a sudden, a great earthquake came. Rattled those prison bars. Elvis Presley had no idea what he was thinking about. He was the first one to come out with jailhouse rock. Jesus Christ was. Amen. That jailhouse began to rock. Then prison doors come flying open. And that jailer, that jailer, boy, he was, uh, he was all upset. It was nighttime. It was dark. He couldn't see nothing. He knew the, the prison doors would come flying open. He thought all the prisoners were going to escape. And he thought, I can't face this. I, I, I can't go through this. And he's ready to pull out his sword and ready to kill himself. Paul and Silas said, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're all still here. We're all yeah. still here. Yeah. And the jailer, the jailer says, the jailer says, bring me, bring me a light. Bring me a light so I can see. Man. You know what? He wasn't going to get a light. Yeah. Bless God, he was going to get the light. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right, preacher. Yeah. 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 I was preaching to him, Come Jesus, on. and the jailer got saved. Father yeah. Paul told him, you see, you know what? Not only you, but you and your house. Come on, Come on. Come on. And the jailer took Paul and Silas out, took them to his house. They went in there. They preached Jesus unto his family. The jailer got saved. Yeah. His family got saved. They got baptized. That's right, Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. It's good. God gave Paul a vision. Yes, indeed. There were some opportunities that opened up along the way. And yes, there was some hardship and some struggles that also came along the way. But it was all God's plan. Amen. It was all His will. And Paul and Silas stayed faithful to it no matter what the circumstances were. And the end result, they fulfilled the vision that God laid out for them. Amen. I wonder here this morning, who in here's got a vision? Who in here's got a vision that God has given you a purpose in your life for you to do something for Him? God's given it to you and you ain't doing nothing with it. I wonder how many people are sitting here this morning that ain't got a vision and don't want a vision. Mm. I wonder how many people here this morning God gave you a vision and you started pursuing after that vision but an obstacle came up and you threw in the towel. I surrender. I surrender. I wonder how many people be willing when they throw in the towel after this message here and spend some time with God, be willing to go over there and snatch that towel back up. And Come say, on. I'm going to press forward. Yes. I'm going to Come on. I, I tell you what, Come I'm up too far. Come on. Turn back now. That's God right. bless yeah. me so much. Yeah. Turn back now. Yeah. Turn back now. I can't face this. I can't face this. Yeah. I don't want to give it. Bless God, I can't face it by water. You quit. Come on. Yeah. 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 God's been too good to me. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
said here this morning, Paul had a vision of a man needing help. Two women got help along the way. Paul paid a price. The mission and the vision was accomplished when the jailer and his family got saved. And let me say this. To those who may have doubt, those who are struggling with some things, those that have faced some disappointment and don't know how you're going to make it, how you're going to fulfill that vision in the end. The only way, listen to me, the only way a vision will not end in success is if you, call, if, if you turn a blinded eye to God's call. The only way a vision will not end in success is if you turn a blinded eye to God's call. Basically, you see a need and you go, I don't want no part of it. People over here are going hungry and doing what doing without. Come on. I've got, I've got the means, but I won't help them. So and so over there is dying and going to hell, and I might be the only one that can make a difference in their life. Man, I'm not even giving it a try because who knows? It may not end in success. Cowards. Lazy. Cowards. Quitters. Bless God, every time I read the Word of God, a lot of the songs we sing around here, I, I, I hear things about being a soldier for the Lord. Yeah. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. We're in a battle. This battle talks about being in a warfare, a spiritual warfare. No wonder we're losing the battle. No wonder Satan's getting a foothold every single day in our country and getting footholds in our churches because we got a churches, bunch of churches full of cowards and quitters who don't want even want to go through a struggle. They don't want to face a trial. They just want it all to be easy and to be comfortable. They just want everything just to flow all nicely. Well, bless God, I read in God's Word, everything don't always flow nicely. Yeah. Everything don't always oh, flow, flow smoothly. You know what? I'm not the type of person I don't think God wants us to be the type of people to take the path of least resistance. Mm, Jesus didn't take the path of least resistance. He stood right up their faces called them called snakes and vipers. Called them for who they were and stood for what was right. I'd be wondering how many people in here would be willing to pay the price for the end result to see people get saved. Every head bowed, every eye closed everybody looking around here this morning. What happens when you pursue the vision God has placed before you. You willing to pursue a vision? If you got a vision, are you willing to do whatever it takes to fulfill that vision? If you don't have a vision that you want to do something for God, are you willing to spend some time on your knees? Are you willing to spend some time in prayer? Are you willing to spend some time in God's Word and seek direction and guidance? What happens when you pursue the vision God has placed before you? When you start pursuing after the vision God's placed before you, hey, He'll open doors along the way. Amen. He'll provide opportunity for you to be a blessing and a help to others along the way. Yes, struggles and trials, hardships, they're going to come your way anytime that you're serving the Lord and pursuing after a vision. But are you willing to stand in the midst of those trials, those struggles, and say, I trust God before, I trust Him now, I'll trust Him forevermore. He's brought me this far. He's didn't, he didn't bring me this far to drop me, to leave me hanging. I'm going to cling to Him, and He's going to bring me through. He's lifted me up out of the, uh, miry, uh, the horrible pit out of the miry clay. He's set my feet on a solid rock. He's established my goings. If He's done that for me, I'm going to trust Him with everything else. And when the trials and tribulations and struggles and hardships come your way, are you willing to trust God? Because if you're willing to trust God and you do trust God in the midst of those things, He'll bring you out the other side better than you ever was before. And you'll succeed in accomplishing the vision that God laid out before you. Yes, it's work. Yes, it's hard. But anything worth doing is hard. If it's easy, it's not worth your time. Because if it's easy, everybody can do it. The hard stuff is worth putting forth the effort to accomplish. Serving the Lord, I love the Lord. 
God makes some things easy. Sometimes the Lord allows it to get hard to make us realize how easy the hard situations can be when we cling to Him. You don't have a vision, this altar's open. Come get a vision. Come and find purpose in your life. Every Christian has been called by God to spread the gospel. Amen. You got a vision, you're not fulfilling that vision. This altar's open. Why don't you come? Say, God, give me strength, give me courage, give me wisdom, give me desire, give me a backbone like a saw log. To be willing to stand and fight for what's right. To stand and fight for the cause of Christ. Maybe you're here this morning and God's given you a vision. You've been pursuing that vision, but you've come up against a brick wall. Trust on trust in God. Hey. If he could do it for Joshua and the children of Israel, bring the walls of Jericho down, he can bring the walls down in your life. The obstacles is keeping you from getting to your prize in England. If you want to accomplish the vision that God's laid out for you, don't you dare quit. You just keep pressing forward. Lower your head and plow forward. Don't lose heart. Don't lose faith. Trust in God. The only way a vision will not end in success is if you turn a blinded eye to God's call. You'll be successful. You'll accomplish the vision God's laid out for you as long as you're constantly seeking Him and pursuing that vision. I heard Preacher Reese say this for all, just about all my life. He heard it from Jack Hiles. Failure plus failure plus failure plus failure equals success. You only fail when you give up. Don't give up. Jesus didn't give up on us. Let's don't give up in serving Him. Our dear and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank You for this day. We thank You for all Your many blessings. I thank You, Lord, for this message. And I hope and pray that it was a blessing to those here this morning. God, I pray that You just put something deep down inside our hearts that will make us want to press forward, not quit, not give up, but just keep serving you and pursuing after the vision, Lord, that you've laid ahead of us. Thank you, Lord, for what you've called me to do. Lord, I want to pursue that call, and I want to accomplish it before you call me home. I want to finish my course. I want to stand before you, and I want you to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want you to be proud of me. I don't care what anybody else thinks. I want you to be proud of me. Lord, I love you. Lord, we praise you. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. Thank you so much for being attentive. We're in the Smiths. Don't forget service tonight at 6 o'clock.